Now they say that blood runs thicker than water, and I'm just saying it doesn't always taste like it order. See, blood has this way of demanding respect in spite of its adversity to often getting wet, and I know no they to put faith in their words, and perhaps that's why I often feel it absurd that people who are simply related from fucking hold greater sway over those who have done nothing to clans where red rivers run deep, and despite all that blood, they still shit where they sleep. See, water has a tendency to go with the flow, to follow through journeys without knowing their goals, whereas blood would have clotted, perhaps never run, and still have the audacity to call him her son. And there's a reveal, a little personal truth, which some out there may well find uncouth, but fuck your judgment. Am I your son? Have your words and actions left me undone? Have you flicked through the pages of my personal truths where a monster's apron strings twisted in two daggers of malice, manipulation and pain and all in the name of hiding her shame? Now, you can't choose your family. Again, the narrative plays, so I smile and add, maybe, but you can choose to walk away. See, I see no sense in wading on through blood-stained halls and slipping on sinew where words have no meaning, no substance, no depth, and liquid red rubies drip malicious intent through distorted dioramas proclaiming false truths, false claims of love misrepresented through photograph moments filled with disdain as arguments erupt again and again. I won't stop taking photos until you all smile. And there's the fight to hold back the bile, but this seems now quite poignant, perhaps rather apt, the covering of truth beneath twisted media apt, a kind of pre-photoshop for hiding the facts of relentless flash exposure until you yield into a smile that hurts you, a smile that brings pain, and no one will know this, they'll think you're insane, because what would a child know? Such things they will say. What will the neighbours think of you acting this way? You mustn't utter such words of family. They will not go away. You must love and respect them at the end of the day. Such power holds language upon isolated souls. Poor coping strategies are bandages for deep rotten holes. It's why cover-ups are easy because the truth can be cold, especially when narratives don't fit cultural moulds and when you no longer trust your feelings. When your thoughts have no hold, the blade that cuts cross-hatch meanings forms a safety net upon where you fall. And these times are now long past, though wounds slow to heal and through decades of work, I can occasionally feel that my thoughts and my feelings are not to be buried, that even such hard times are things to be cherished because the water around me is truly divine. It's color turned to claret, and I'm not talking wine. This lifeblood I have chosen, and it's taken some time, but I have faith in the friendships that help to keep me alive. Old code can be reprogrammed, but you have to be kind. Embrace darkened waters and give yourselves time. They fuck you up, your mum and dad. Philip Larkin once scribed, and I remember reading that, and it set me on fire. So fuck all the judgment. Fuck other shames. They do not walk the path you do. They have no bloody claim. The darkness runs deeper, warping definitions of sane. Old habits are hesitant to welcome in new ways. I give gratitude to the blade. They help keep me alive, carving red lines of contradiction before able to describe the feelings inside of me, the shame that grew and developed a reality that to this day feels true, that I am poison, that I am what's wrong. And there are times where I can challenge this, those days I feel strong. But in moments of weakness, when weary and tired, I... I become consumed by the sickness. I question why I'm alive. Thanks. Clap up once again for Simon J. Keenan, man. Make some noise, make some noise, make some noise. 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 Make some noise.